Hello and welcome to this episode of Fresh Fuel. This is the second episode on Double Black, a 94 four-wheel drive Corolla. Last episode was interior and lowering, and this episode it's all about paint. I would love to say this is a how to paint a car on a budget, and it sort of is, however this is the added bonus of some ideas on how to fix the paint if it doesn't come out as planned. So I've been stripping the car down to give it a good clean and then give it a sand before we put some paint on it. Uh, and I came to the front end and I thought look, for completeness sake I'll just whip the headlights and grill out and the indicators so we can get, you know, easier than masking to be honest. Um, except when I um, started to pull it apart, this, this is seriously loose, the grill is all over the place, there's homemade brackets in here. Um, and it's not beautiful. The first steps are dismantling and sanding. I find it easier most of the time to remove rather than mask. You'll also find you'll generally end up with a better finished product. I remove the side mouldings, initially with the intention of putting them back on, and then after it was painted, decide it looked pretty good without them. For the initial sand we used 4 to 600 grit wet and dry, warm water because it was pretty cold, and a splash of dishwash soap for lubrication. You know the sad fact is, it actually looked better after a sand down than it did beforehand. They say that your paint job is only as good as what's underneath. Trust me when I say, paint makes things all one colour, but it certainly doesn't cover anything up. Each time I paint a car, I'm reminded that if you've got a crack there before you paint, it'll still be there after you paint, it'll just have paint in it. Well finally there's some sun out, so we've dragged the car outside, actually driven it because it's still driving fine, um, and going to do a little bit of bogging, finish the sanding, um, there's not a lot, just a little bit around where it's already had some rust repairs up around the top of the windscreen. There's quite a few little dents all over it which, to be honest, Look, it's a quick paint job. I could spend a few more days getting them all sorted and stuff, but honestly, look, I might regret it later, but I reckon we'll just try and get the bogging done, get it in primer today, block it back, and then we can hopefully tomorrow, if it's another good day, we can um, get some black on it, just get it done. You know, sometimes I think it's best just to, just to look at what you're dealing with, ultimately look at the overall car and go, how much time do I want to spend on this? Let's just get it sorted, so. That's the plan today, we'll see how we go. It's on. <laughs> uh, I always put probably too much hardener, because I'm always paranoid that it's not going to go off and then I'll just have to try and scrape some bog, unhardened bog out. Um, and I haven't bogged for a while, so I'm well and truly off my A game, but it doesn't really matter because it'll all get sanded back anyway, so it's there, it's on a few other spots around the car, and basically from here we'll just wait till it hardens off, we'll give it a bit of a sand with a pretty coarse grit, go back down through the fine grit sandpaper, see how it looks, if we need to put some more on, we'll put some more on, and then um, finish sanding the car and mask it up for primer. This may be self-explanatory, but I learned doing this specific corner that a sander can actually damage glass. I sort of just assumed it was hard and I've never really had any problems with it before, but this did leave some marks in the glass. Luckily for me, they were covered by the little rubber filler strip that goes around the windscreen, but it was still a valuable lesson to learn, especially on a car that in the grand scheme of things didn't really matter on. Quick tip, if you've got bog knives with bog that's gone hard on them, try and clear them off a little bit first, but um, if it does go hard, don't worry too much, because the wire wheel on a bench grinder, or even a wire brush, I'm sure would work, um, just a quick flick with that, and it takes it off nicely.
good as new. With the bogging done, it's very nearly paint time. Compressed air or a nice wet cloth to get rid of any bog dust. A wipe down with wax and grease remover to get rid of any wax or grease. A final wipe over with a tack cloth to get any last little bits of dust or fibres or anything off. Wet down the ground to stop any dust. And time for primer. So about an hour and a half or two hours into it and the car's actually looking pretty good. It's got three coats of primer on it and uh, we've used about, well the whole four litres of primer. Um, and basically from here we need to block it back with some fine grit sandpaper uh, and then put the top coat on. Uh, but on that note, some people say yeah no worries you can just prime it, uh, you can just paint it within an hour of priming. Uh, and other people say, no, no, you need to leave, leave it for 24 hours. So, um, in all honesty, it's Sunday afternoon and there's nobody I can call and the internet tells me so many different things. What I'm going to do is, instead of rush, 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 I will gently block it back and then I'll leave it the 24 hours uh, just to be safe. And during normal hours, I might ring and talk to some people, which is what I normally do to find out what I need to know and see what they reckon. Um, but in the meantime, it's looking pretty good and um, it's kind of exciting, it's coming along. It's actually ended up being about three weeks. Um, we've been struggling to get a good weekend uh, and uh, also popped up north and picked up a new car which you guys will see eventually, which is kind of cool. Anyway, we've uh, blocked it back, dry sanded it back at, with 400 grit sandpaper. Um, and it's looking pretty good. There's a few little, few little bits and pieces here and there, but ultimately I just, you know, kind of keen to get it done and got a lot of other projects to do. And um, sometimes you just have to, you know, look at what you're working on and and be realistic. So uh, from here, it's it's a beautiful day, but we've uh, but it's a bit of a breeze, so we've put up sort of a makeshift um, wind stop, and I'll move the car a bit closer in. I've uh, got to remask it up, prep sole, wax and grease to remove it, and then basically start spraying. So it's a bit exciting. And while you're watching this, you can pretty much take this as a what shouldn't I do while I'm painting a car? Don't stop halfway through a stroke. Your gun's probably going to be further away from the car. You're probably going to have a wider spray pattern. You're probably going to have more thinners. But you know, every time you paint a car, you learn what you shouldn't do, maybe what you should do, and basically it's all just a big learning process. So I'm using a 2K paint, or a two-pack paint, and basically what that means is you have the paint, you have a hardener, which means it's a chemical reaction which makes the paint go off as opposed to drying traditionally. And thin it down with some thinners, put it through the gun, and technically it's supposed to, if you do it properly, have a beautiful off the gun finish which you don't need to touch. Technically, if you do it properly.
So you're about to hear me say a certain word many times. Orange peel, orange peel, orange peel, orange peel. And that right where my head is, the reflection right there, that's orange peel. It's not ideal, but it is fixable. And it probably won't surprise you at all to hear that this car is about to give me lots of opportunity to learn how to fix it. And it's finished, as far as paint goes. It's six o'clock and that makes three and a half hours. Um, it's got four coats. It turned out probably better than I thought it would. It's got a bit of orange peel, as in the whole paint job's orange peel. Um, and there's a few drips from something happened on the gun. I'm not really too sure and it dripped a bit of paint, but apart from that, it's actually looking pretty good. It's all one color. Uh, as per always, it always takes longer than you realize, so note to yourselves. Um, give yourself plenty of time. Um, a sore shoulder reminds me that small cars are so much better than large cars to paint. So if you're doing this for your first time, get a small car. Everything's just better with a small car. And now basically it's time for cleanup. And we'll put it in the, in the workshop overnight. Maybe tomorrow, because it's the weekend still, tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll start putting the headlights back in and the bits and pieces back on. And I don't really know what I'm saying right now, but I'm pretty tired. I'm probably paint fumed up to my eyeballs, so I think I'll leave it here, tidy up, and um, probably see you tomorrow. So here we are, about 72 hours post final paint, and truth be told, the finish wasn't one that I was thrilled with. Um, a fair bit of orange peel, and even a bit of a rough, even a rough sort of a surface on it. Um, that might have been the wind came up when I was at you know in the last last couple of coats. Actually, it was, the wind was up the whole time, but the wind particularly came from the last couple of coats. So I thought, look, I could leave it like it is, and from a distance it's actually all right. Where I thought I could try and prove it. So I did a bit of Googling and I've um, I tried both a 1500 grit and a 2000 grit sandpaper, wet sanding, and I felt the 1500 left, left a few a few lines in it still, a few sanding lines. Maybe that was because the paint was quite soft, but either way I've ended up going with a 2000 grit sandpaper, uh, just blocking it back, plenty of fresh water, and then that's ultimately left me with a sort of a matte surface. Um, a lot smoother, still the orange peel there. I think in all honesty that was actually in the primer, so I'm, uh, I'm a bit nervous about, uh, you know, there's four coats on there, but I'm a bit nervous about cutting right back through, so I'm just, just taking the top surface off. So there still will be orange peel, but at least it'll be shiny orange peel, as opposed to not really what it was. Anyway, so slightly matte surface, which then I've used a couple of different cutting compounds gentle cutting compounds. Um, I've tried this Worth product, it's called P30, um, and apparently it's equivalent to a 3000 grit sandpaper, which would make sense. Um, and also a another one, a Meguiar's, um, again, just some fancy compound, you know, cutting compound sort of a uh, deal. And both of them, to be honest, leave about the same result. Uh, it's still got some fine scratches in it. You'd look at it in the, in the light and the sun, and it's still, it's still not ideal, um, and there's a little bit of haziness. Um, so, finally, I've gone with a polish, just a regular polish, um, and that's actually brought it out quite nicely. Uh, it's, it's still not perfect, but ultimately, it's you know, it's a home paint job, and it's very easy to kind of get sidetracked by, you know, the beautiful deep paint jobs you see on, on social media and then kind of expect that your own one's going to turn out the same, which, you know, it might. You might. If you, if you get all your ducks in a row, it might actually turn out like that. But, mine hasn't. Uh, and I just need to accept that, but make it as good as I can. Um, and then just keep researching and keep looking into it for the next one. So, uh, from here, I've done about half the car. need to finish, finish sanding it, cutting it, and polishing it and then um, reassemble and get the decals on and 
can see the results and you can let me know what you think. <laughs> so it feels like sacrilege, sanding off your beautiful paint, except you wouldn't be sanding if it was actually beautiful. Basically what you gotta do, lots of nice warm soapy water and nice sandpaper. Get it down to that matte surface, be careful you don't go back through to the primer otherwise you've got to repaint. Get the whole car or whatever panel you need to back to, it's kind of just a matte, basically it takes off that top layer. And then you use a cutting compound or a you know, fairly harsh polish. I normally go overboard, put too much on, I'd rather put too much on than have it you know, burn through the paint and wreck it. And polishing, uh, it takes a bit to get into, but truthfully by the time you've done a whole car, you're pretty much expert level. I probably should put a quick reminder in here that this is only if your paint job sort of sucks off the gun. With 2k paint, you shouldn't be needing to do any of this. It should just be off the gun, good as gold, you're sorted. Use your microfiber, take the polished haze off, and hopefully you'll be rewarded with an improvement. So I spent more or less the majority of the day working on the paint. And it's actually, I think it's going to be alright. Uh, I think it might ultimately end up being something that I can be proud of, which at multiple steps, but after straight after the paint, um, after wet sanding it, and then after using a cutting compound, each time I thought, oh, it's still not good, it's still not good. Finally, polishing it has made it actually look really good. Got about half the car left to do with the polisher and a final polish, and it's actually looking Oh, I'm pretty stoked actually. So you may have noticed that I'm actually using two different polishers on this vehicle. The first one is the rotary polisher, the second one is a DA or a dual action polisher. The main difference is the rotary polish is kind of like a hunting knife, the DA is sort of like a scalpel. And they are interchangeable, but just like a half inch ratchet and a quarter inch ratchet are interchangeable, each one is definitely better for different jobs. If you're interested or want to know more about paint care and paint correction, you've got to go and check out Larry from Ammo NYC. The guy is a master. He's got some amazing videos and a lot of what I know has come from him. So a fairly decent number of hours were sunk into the final polish of the whole vehicle and what seemed like days later, it was finished. And it looks really good. It's nothing like perfect. And under the harsh lights of the workshop, you can, you can still see big time blemishes. But, compared to what it was, it is a vast improvement. I never ever thought I'd be able to salvage it this well. A while ago, I made these up. Actually, I drew them up and got them printed down the road. Uh, and these are going to go down the sort of the door into the rear quarter panel. So I've buffed it all up properly, right ready, and I reckon now's the time to try one, so. I've just realized I haven't polished this quarter panel. So. I've buffed it all up properly, right ready. Well that's a nuisance. Hang fire on that one. <laughs> right, so after looking closely, I realised they hadn't polished this panel here. So quickly polished that, giving it a clean off with some um, some sort of worth what is it? Worth brake cleaner. Just to Look, I tried on a small spot first and it seemed to look alright with the paint. I just thought, I don't know if the polish has left any residue or anything, so I've just given it a quick wipe down. And let's try that again. So, for those of you that are interested, I actually saw these decals on the side of a Mazda van. So, I took a photo, pulled it into Adobe Illustrator, drew around it, added a gradient, and then went up to the local sign writers who printed it on some fancy UV stable vinyl. If you've got a friend who's in marketing or somebody who has, you know, half a clue about the Adobe software, then these sort of decals and graphics are actually pretty easy to do. Well, 
All right, and then, apparently you need a card. And, moment of truth. Too cold. Finally, finally, with my steady hand, I cut this one. Ooh, this makes me nervous. How's it look? That is cool. That is so cool. So as you can see, with many hours and lots of experimentation, the before and after is remarkable. The disappointment off the gun to how it looks now, I'm absolutely stoked. I'm calling paint a definite win. Alright, and here we have the project costs so far for Double Black. As before, in the first column we have the actual costs, which is what it's cost me. The second column is if you had a basic set of tools, which is, you know, ratchets and screwdrivers and all the rest. And the third column is if you're buying everything from scratch. And this is from the start of the project. So we're going to take the existing costs. They are from the last episode, come in at 1520 and 1590 for basic tools and 1970 from scratch. This is all New Zealand Oz. Now this paint kit, now that includes uh, paint and primer and sandpaper and wax and grease remover and all the other little bits and pieces that you need. All the basically, um, I guess you call them disposables. $450 for that kit. The spray gun, I already had a spray gun, but you can pick up a fairly reasonable one for 100 bucks. A compressor and airline, again, I already had this. But to get one that flows enough air and will basically, you know, keep up enough with painting, along with an airline, you're probably looking around the 550 mark. You want to get a mask because especially 2K paint is nasty stuff. A half decent one, you're looking around 70. I already had this. Polish. Now, I tried three different polishes, so we're going to say $150. But realistically, you can learn from my mistakes. Well, not my mistakes, but my trial and error at least. And you don't need two. You need a compound and a polish. So you're looking at $100. Rotary polisher, you can pick one up for $120. The DA, the dual action, you can pick one up for $150. And the decals, these weren't cheap, but, you know, I think they're worth it. They were 100 bucks. So the total so far, with last episode and this episode, I'm coming in at 2220 That is my cost to get to the card where it is now. You'll be looking at 3,230 if you had a basic tool set up. Most of the cost in there is actually buying the compressor and stuff. And started from scratch, not a lot more, 3,610. So prices will be a bit different. Well, they can be quite a lot different actually, depending where you are. And it just helps to show that a simple project like this is not actually unachievable, even if you're literally starting from scratch. And that's it for the second episode of Double Black. You'll find the third and final episode has got some highs and some lows and an end you'd never want to plan for. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.